Senior judges have launched an unprecedented attack on a council that they accuse of disgraceful conduct over the adoption of a young child against the wishes of her father. The judges have ordered that copies of their ruling should be sent to all family judges and every adoption agency. Our Home Affairs correspondent Danny Shaw has been following the case. Well, this case goes back to June 2006 when this girl was born. Her parents had had a casual relationship. The father wasn't involved in her upbringing until he learned in January this year that the girl was going to be adopted. Now, he tried to intervene. He sent a letter to East Sussex County Council to try and block the adoption. And what we've learned in the court today is that the council really just didn't deal with the letter until it was too late. There was a hearing due to take place at court, but the day before the hearing, the girl was placed with her adoptive parents. Now, the judges were very critical of the way the council had dealt with this. Lord Justice Wall said it was disgraceful conduct by the council. He used the word disgraceful five times in his judgment. He said the council's actions amounted to an abuse of power. It was wholly unacceptable. The arrogance of it was shocking, he said said the council had set out to prevent the father from being heard. It was the worst kind of sharp practice. And his colleague, Lord Justice Wall, was also very critical. He said the council was out to gain its ends by means more foul than fair. The upshot of this decision, however, is that the girl remains with her adoptive parents. But there is the possibility that the father could bring proceedings in the courts to contest the way that East Sussex County Council dealt with the case to try to get the adoption order reversed. But that's some way off. Danny Shaw reporting for us there. Now uh, with us on the line in Southampton is uh, Nadine Taylor, who is the coordinator for the campaign group Fathers for Justice. Uh, good evening to you. Good evening. Uh, the judges are pretty clear, pretty uh, vociferous in their comments today. Are you surprised about that? Well, the language they've used is pretty damning, I have to agree. Um, but the judges and the court can in interpret the law, and they do interpret the law all the time. Yet in this situation, they actually chose to inter interpret the law in this way. For the sake of 24 hours, they've let this child lose eff effectively her father and her paternal fa fa family. What do you think were the motivations of the council then in this case? Well, um, it's, it's, it's not widely known, but actually councils get bonuses um, for placements, uh, target placements in adoption cases. And I think in this case they have been driven by their bonuses rather than the best interests of the child, quite simply. Well, what do you mean bonuses? Financial bonuses for yeah. the council? Yeah, there are financial bonuses uh, and they, there are targets that they, that they need to hit for placements. And, and I think this is simply a case of they've, they've taken the opportunity, the father's case has been delayed, They've pushed it through double quick and for the sake of 24 hours they've put their own interest before that of the child. But it's pretty hard to believe that uh, for some financial gain they, they would do this, surely? Well, it is hard to believe, but it does happen. And I think what people should be asking themselves this evening is that when this child grows up and finds out that this has happened, what on earth are they going to think that for the sake of 24 hours and council bonuses they have effectively lost their paternal family? Uh, what do you think are the wider implications of this uh, across the country? Because uh, uh, the judges said that they wanted uh, the comments to be sent to uh, all family judges and every adoption agency. Well, I, I hope people, you know, wake up and listen to what they've said. It's all, but it's all very well them saying these things. They've actually got to then make it happen and put it into practice. This is not unusual. We hear about cases like this all the time, um, and our, the number of people that are coming to our organisation is increasing, which is really distressing. Um, so, we, you know, we want to see a radical change in the law. We will be asking tomorrow for there to be a radical change in the law. That it is in the best interest of the child to see both parents. So when you say a radical change, I mean, what exactly would that be? Well, I think at this stage we have to start putting the child first. And I think that the line that they use is it's much more of a throwaway line. You know, they have their own interests, certainly organisations like social services. They are not putting the interests of the child first. And we really have got to start waking up to that fact. And, and people have got to, when they go into situations like this, ensure that the child's interests are put first. I don't think anybody can agree that for the sake of 24 hours, putting the child anywhere which is what has happened here, is better than putting the child somewhere with its own family. All right, Nadine Taylor from Fathers for Justice, thanks very much for your Thank time. Thank you very much.